Here we have quite a difficult question, and it's about line segments. So we're given two points, and we're told of the line segment between them, there is a point M that divides that line segment in the ratio two to three. We then get given a second line, and we're told it's perpendicular to our original line, PQ. We want to find its equation. My top tip for this question would be you must draw a diagram. If you don't visualise what's going on, it's very hard to follow the steps properly. So let's start ourselves off then with a diagram of P and Q. It's quite a rough sketch. So we can start off with saying P somewhere here with coordinates minus nine, seven. And what's important is that we have some idea of relatively where these points are. So 11, 12, it's going to be quite a lot further over to the right and also a bit higher up than P. So let's mark Q, 11, 12. Now we can mark the line segment between them, PQ. So it looks something like this. We want to put the point M on this line segment. It's going to be a little bit closer to P than it is to Q, thanks to that ratio two to three. So let's mark M somewhere around here. The next part for us to think then is line L is perpendicular to PQ. So I'm imagining it looks something like this, where it crosses at 90 degrees to our line segment PQ. Let's think then, what things do we need to find to be able to do this question? The point M is essential. And once you think about perpendicular lines, that means gradients of these two lines are also going to be really important for us. So our checklist is, can we find point M and can we find the gradient of our line PQ? Let's start off then with finding point M. So if you consider the line segment P to Q, we can break this line segment down into a horizontal and a vertical component. Horizontally, we've gone from minus nine to 11 on the X axis. So to go from minus nine to 11, that's going along 20. On the Y axis, we've gone from seven up to 12. So we've increased by five. Thinking about then, how are we going to divide PM to MQ in the ratio two to three? Well, instead of thinking about ratios, it's much more helpful to think about fractions. So thinking about this as a fraction, that means P to M is going to be two fifths of P to Q. Because obviously our two and our three are giving us a total of five parts in our ratio. Let's link this back then to thinking about our 25 triangle. So we want to take two fifths of PQ well, if you took two fifths of 20, two fifths of 20 should just give you eight for the horizontal component. And thinking vertically, two fifths of five will just give you two. I'm hoping you can see how really helpful this triangle kind of thinking is. It makes our numbers much easier. Next step then, if you start at minus nine, and you have gone eight along on the x-axis, you've ended up at minus one. So we can put a minus one. And likewise on the y-axis, we start at seven, we increased by two, so that's taken us to nine. We found the coordinates then of point M. It's minus one, nine. That was the first item on our checklist. Second thing to do then is can we find the gradient of this line that goes through M, because to find the equation of a line, you need a gradient and a point. Switch to blue. How can we find the gradient then? Well, actually this triangle we drew earlier is the key to finding the gradient, isn't it? We've got a rise, which was five, and a run of 20. So let's just write down gradient 
of P, Q. We want to do rise divided by run. So that's five divided by 20 to give us one quarter. Thinking next about perpendicular gradients, we know they must be negative reciprocals. So for our line L, we know that the gradient of L, well, if this one is a quarter, gradient of L has to be negative four as its negative reciprocal. We're almost done then. We know that line L has gradient minus four and it passes through the point minus one, nine. So thinking about our equation of a straight line, where we have y equals mx plus c, we can take this point where y equals nine. We know that m is minus four, and our x at this point was minus one. We use this subbing in y and x to find the value of c, don't we? The missing y-intercept. So we've got nine equals minus four times minus one, which is plus four, plus c, and this should leave us with c is five. Finishing off then, we just need to write out the equation of this line using those two bits of information. So we have y, equals negative 4x plus 5 for the equation of line L.